the earth was cursed and they had to till the ground for bread. Now the first two offspring of Adam and Eve was Cain and Abel. And um, Cain, he opened the door to sin. But how did this happen? In offering, <laughs> they were giving offerings. And the Bible says God had no respect for Cain's offer. He didn't reject it. He didn't have respect for it. And that caused the jealousy that killed his brother. You'll never kill anybody if you're not jealous. So it's the same story over and over. Lies and deception, disobedient, it brings all the rubbish that we sit in. <laughs> this is what man has done to himself. He left the presence of God and he found himself in this place. But God's guarantees was in place. So today I want to bring something to you that is so intrigued that you have to understand that the spirit and the natural <laughs> the Bible is a place where these two realms intersect and it was there till Christ came, the seed, and then he brought that realm right into this darkness. Please, They left the light. When Jesus came, he said, the people in darkness now see a great light because <laughs> John says the true light has now come into the world. So on the fourth day, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. And that's when time came. There was four days of pre preparation and three days, two days of filling, and then there's rest. But the middle of the seven days was time created. But the minute they fell, this moved back right to Adam and all the generations played out. Now, Genesis 2 is very important because he talks about these generations in a day. And then he says how God did it. God planted a garden eastward in Eden and he made man and he put man in it. But he said something before, before everything. He goes, I think it's verse 5, he says, Before there were plants, before there were rain. Whoa! The plants were in the generation days in creation because on day three, he made plants. But then he says, before there was rain, now he steps into the generational days. So this is where it all comes together. You must read it like this. And then he goes on and he says, before there was a man to till the ground. It's crazy to think they had to till the ground without rain. Without rain. So how hard must it be to get their bread? It was literally in the sweat of their faces. It was a hopeless situation. Job says there is no hope for a man. But God's guarantees was in place. And if you start hearing the spirit in the word, nobody can take you out. Listen, Corona is not the end of the world. <laughs> world wars is not the end of the world. It's always been. It's a resetting. It's a resetting. But we've got to get into the times and the seasons and the purposes of God. So this takes me right back to the fourth day when God made the sun and the moon and the stars, a lesser light for night. Oh my word, just listen to this. In the beginning, God divided darkness and light. And he called light day and he called darkness night. And he never went to night. And man had to keep this place of ever-present light. And what did he do? He didn't. He ate from darkness. Because the minute there was a separation between man and woman, because God made them one, Satan came and beguiled them. So this separation, now the principle of separation kicked in. And this is where it's going to work through the ages. So the first separation was light and darkness. Now in the realm of darkness, light and day kicked in, which would be a separation between night and day, which is also darkness. So when Jesus came, he says, the true light is now coming to the world. <laughs> and the people that sat in darkness saw a great light. But just before he died, he says, work while it's, while it's light, because the night cometh. When was the night? <laughs> when Jesus was crucified, it was midnight. And then there was a 40-year period of very a dark day on earth. It was the day of the removal of the old. And this is what the book of Revelation is about. It was a dog day of removal. So 1 John 2 says, <laughs> a new commandment. He says, because the day has broken. 
oh, come on, the morning has broken. Revelation says, if you be an overcomer, I'm going to give you the morning star. That is like, we have to understand this new day. And this is all days and seasons and years. But when God said, um, let there be a firmament on heaven in Genesis 1.26, he says, they will be for times and seasons and days and years and signs. They will be for signs. Now, when it comes to time, you have to go to Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. He says, there is a time and a season for every purpose. There's not a purpose for every time and season. There's a time and a season for every purpose. So the very fact that you're alive means you're a purpose of God and you need to find out what it is. 